Yeah, so I mean we have so we have the ups and downs of temperature and and what we're going through right now uh, is is the powerful signal of climate variability, right? But that's sitting on top of climate change. And so as we progress into the next decades, then the the warming that we're going to be experiencing from the increased greenhouse gases is going to really amplify that climate variability. But what we're experiencing right now is still on the fairly fairly shallow increase in temperature um, averaged over time. And and so is this climate change? Not not necessarily. I mean, this is climate variability that, that we've experienced in the past. And in fact, going back uh, a thousand years, there are mega droughts in the paleo record, droughts of 30 to 50 to 80 years. And um, so the possibility is there that we could be going into a, a 30 to 50 to 80 year drought. Um, but we don't, that we can't really predict well. Um, and, um, but right now we are in a, we're in the toughest year on, on record. And, um, and so it's going to be an interesting test of the, the water system that has been developed in the Western U.S., which in large part was developed during a time that we were pretty flush with water. Right. So, uh, like so many other uh, climate phenomena, it, it's uh, it's a little hard to tease out the climate change signal <laughs> at this point. Uh, oh, that's right. But you're alluding to the potential for exponential rise in temperature coming this century. Is that correct? That's right. And and so as we head into that, then we think that the the amplitude, the magnitude of these these extremes in that climate variation uh, are are going to hit us uh, harder and harder. Um, so, and that's I mean that's part of our understanding of climate change is that the climate variability will become greater. Uh, the droughts more intense and the precipitation events more intense. In the western U.S., the the water supply is in the is in the high mountains, and there are very few people that live in the high mountains. The vast majority of the people live downstream, ways away, or not even downstream, but off in another basin, right? For instance, in the Los Angeles basin here, if it wasn't, so from Los Angeles down to San Diego, uh, just the local water supply would support about four to 500,000 people. So you need this import of water to allow there to be 15 million people between Los Angeles and San Diego. Uh, and that's the case all over the West, is that you have these tentacles of water, these aqueducts that carry the water from where it is to where it's now needed. And um, and so, uh, so being able to get that water to those locations um, is, is going to be an interesting challenge. With with the change in temperature, the increases in temperature, more of that snow is going to fall as rain. And when it falls as rain, then it immediately runs downhill. And that displaces reservoir capacity, right? Because the mountain snowpack is a reservoir, and then there are reservoirs down low. But if you're constantly taking that water and moving it down and not keeping it up there as a mountain reservoir, then your reservoir capacity is diminished and your water supply is diminished. Um, and in, in California, the reservoir capacity is about, it's about one and a half years of annual precipitation. In the Colorado River Basin, it's about four and a half because of those huge reservoirs, Lake Powell and Lake Mead. But in California, it's a more delicate situation because of the, the lesser reservoir capacity. 